I just made the math earlier. This is the 30th, 37th time that we are together on this practice. So can you put in chat, Carolina, the, the text? We have been doing this for a long time and we love to do this because I have the privilege to be nudging people to come and share their knowledge, their wisdom or practice or something they are testing. So now, today we have the privilege to be with Carrie. We did one meeting together, right, Carrie, with people in your network. It's an amazing network of facilitators in New Zealand. So we are based in Canada, on the west part of Canada, so we are far apart. It's already tomorrow for her. So thank you, Carrie, for coming. And we are very curious to see what you'll be sharing with us today. So welcome, introduce yourself, and go wild. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I was having a little panic attack for the for the week previous to this. Some of you already know I was scheduled to do another North American call a few weeks ago. Uh, and I thought it started at 7 a.m. New Zealand time and it started at 5 a.m. New Zealand time. So by the time I showed up, Everyone else had uh, long finished the call. So uh, Paul, uh, Paul Fernando was getting these messages from me over the last couple of weeks. Are we sure we got the right time? I was so determined to show up on time. So thank you so much for coming. Lovely to see um, Jessica and Nina from New Zealand. Uh, and lovely to not see, but I can see that Margaret is on the call from Sydney. So we've got the Down Under crew representing. Thank you for having us, our North American friends. Um, as Fernando said, I run a network in New Zealand uh, for facilitators and up until starting that, I hated online facilitation. Wave your hand if online facilitation is not your favourite. Yeah, not your favourite, not your favourite. You might cope with it, but not your favourite. That was me too. Uh, but I figured the only way I can meet regularly with facilitators all over the country was to get online. And so through the practice of just getting on and doing it, we've discovered all sorts of ways to get people engaged and contributing. So it is my hope, it is my intention for today that the next 90 minutes is not just interesting, but it's genuinely useful for you if you are facilitating online. But in order for that to happen, in order for it to be genuinely useful, uh, there's a couple of things that I need from you. I'm only paying a small, playing a small part in the usefulness of the session. In order for it to be really useful, there's two things I need from you. The first is I need you to be fully present in the room. That means turning off your emails, turning off your notifications, turning your phones upside down, closing the door if you have to, and getting really, really present to the space. My preference is that you have your camera on. I promise you, you won't uh, dissolve into a pile of salt. So if you can stretch your comfort zone a little bit to have your camera on, that would be awesome. But I need you to be fully present in the room. So I'm going to give you a 10 second countdown. All right. And in that 10 seconds, I want you to do whatever you need to do to get yourself present. All right. So we've got 10 we got nine, switching off your emails. We've got eight, turning off your phone. We've got seven, jumping up, closing that door. we got six, you're taking a deep breath. You know where you are. We've got five, we've got four. What else do you need to switch off? Three, two, one. Everyone present? Thumbs up if you're present. All right, we are all here. So that's the first thing I need from you. The second thing I need from you is some contribution. So uh, who's heard of Chad Littlefield before? If you haven't heard of Chad Littlefield, he's your top tip for today is to go and hunt him out. He's a, he's a magician. Uh, but to steal a phrase from him, this uh, session has been designed for contribution, not consumption, which means in order for this session to work, you guys actually need to contribute to the conversation. And so I'm going to ask you to do that in, a, in all sorts of different ways. But most often I'm going to say something like, 
either come off mute or jot in the chat what did you notice now when I say that, that means contribute in a way that works for you. Either come off mute and just jump on in and start talking or jot it in the chat, whatever works for you. Now, we don't need to worry about raising hands. You just kind of jump in. And if you're talking over each other, Zoom will figure that out. If you are desperately wanting to say something and you just can't find a gap, then by all means, hit your digital raised hand and I'll be able to create that space for you to come in. Sound okay? Now I'm gonna introduce you to one more online tool that I use. Now I know that this is not gonna be necessary in today's session because you're all facilitators and you all know how to share the air. But just in case you get super, super passionate about a story and we're going off on a rabbit warren or down, down some off beaten track and I really need to bring things back online, I'm going to introduce you to my handy dandy star. All right. If you see me raising this to the screen, this means we love you. Your story has been awesome. We really appreciate your contribution. And we'd love you to wind it up so to give some space for other people to contribute. Does that sound all right? Perfect. All right, so let's just see if we've got this contribution thing working. I would love for you, either off mute or in the chat, I would love to know what prompted you to show up for today's session. Either off mute or in the chat, who's keen to share? Harry Price is a legend, wouldn't miss it. Oh, <laughs> Nora, too kind, no pressure. Another opportunity to hang out with like-minded people. Oh, nice. There's something special about that. Thanks, John. Uh, Ina, I followed you on LinkedIn for quite a while. Oh, yay! LinkedIn buddies. Nice. Fernando, curiosity for all the energy Kerry brings to the room. Looking for more tips and tricks. Past sessions have been excellent. Looking to learn on how to be more interactive. Tips and tricks. Fantastic. Anyone else want to come off mute and share into the room? Oh, yeah. just, oh. It was great advertising, super advertising. So hats off to the organizers. Um, and it may right. have been Nora That's... that sent me. Yeah, it may have been Nora, but I was also captured by the ad. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. Great. Uh, hats off to you, Fernando and Carolina, for getting that sorted. Nina shared this session with me. Facilitation is a big focus part of my development plan. Kerry, your energy inspires me. I would like to say it's coffee, but it's my newfound habit of water. Woohoo! All right. Well, glad, good to know why you are here. Hopefully, we're going to give you some really practical tips and tricks. And the topic of today's session is about engaging uh, or how to get people engaged and contributing around connecting. Uh, engaging contributing online and this is kind of a weird session right because normally we know the purpose of the session and we create activities around exploring that purpose but this is kind of reverse I'm going to give you a whole bunch of activities and then you're going to have to think about how do they show up in your context and for what purpose might you use them so instead of me giving you a recipe I'm going to be giving you a whole bunch of ingredients and it's going to be up to you to think about how you put those together and so I would like to kick off today with an activity I use to help create connection online. And at the, the name of the activity is called Connection Dominoes. Who played dominoes as a kid or knows what dominoes is about, right? So dominoes, two, part, two pieces, uh, two parts to a piece. Goodness gracious, it's only nine o'clock in the morning here and I'm already tripping over my words. Um, and we're connecting those pieces together. So there's a little bit of instruction to these activities. So I'm gonna give it to you in two parts. The first part is, I would, in a minute, I would love for you to grab yourself a piece of paper, just an A4 piece of paper or whatever's near to you. And I would love for you to make yourself a picture domino. That looks something like this. On one side, of your picture dom domino, you are going to draw something that represents a family tradition. 
either a tradition you had growing up, a tradition you've started with your own family, but a picture to represent a family tradition. On the other side of your domino, you're going to draw a picture to represent a habit you would like to start or stop. A habit you would like to start or stop. All right, you're going to have about 90 seconds to draw that picture domino. Doesn't need to be exhibition worthy. Just scroll or uh, just scribble it down. I've realized I haven't queued up music, which is not a great look for an engaging online session, but you can play music in your head. If you have finished drawing your domino, just have a look up to the screen. Give me a thumbs up so I know you're ready. A few people there. You've got about 20 seconds left. Okay, wherever you are at with your picture domino is exactly where you need it to be. So in a minute, the wonderful uh, master of breakout rooms, Fernando, is going to open up some rooms. We're going to have four of you in a room for eight minutes to play connection dominoes. And how it works is like this. Whoever has the shortest hair is going to start. And you're going to, John's gone like this. <laughs> John, you're up. Uh, whoever has the shortest hair is going to start. And you're going to share the story of your picture domino. And I want a little bit of conversation in that. So, for example, my one, my tradition is, uh, believe it or not, that is a board game. So as a family, we have a tradition of playing board games. Started with my when my children are young, and now it's continued to my grandchildren. Uh, funnily enough, we've got um, three of our grandchildren staying with us at the moment. And the other night, uh, my four-year-old wanted to learn how to uh, play chess. Four years old, and she's like, Nana, can we play chess? But that's what she's seen us doing. So uh, board games is a family tradition for us. And on this side... Uh, it's a habit that I want to start or stop, and that's drinking water as a starting habit. So I was terribly addicted to energy drinks for 25 years, and so I'm slowly giving up the energy drinks and drinking more water. So that's kind of the level of story that we're wanting to share about your domino. Then after the first person has shared, a second person is going to jump in with a connection. Now, it might not be that uh, you happen to do play board games. It might be that, oh, I've got a four-year-old granddaughter too. The connection doesn't have to exist with what's on the paper. It can exist within the story itself. Then you will connect around until all four have connected your dominoes together. Any questions? All right, Fernando, if you can open up the uh, room. Quick connection. question, Carrie. 
uh, is it better to get p point fives because we have uh, an odd number? So we have four, three groups of four and two triads. Is it better that's to have fine. a triad or a group of five? Triads no, are okay. Um, no, that's fine. Uh, fours, threes, and fours is good. Okay, and they are all okay. mixed by countries. Wonderful. I have a question. Did, did you yeah. say we start in with the person of the longest hair? <laughs> Someone else, John. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I will leave you to debate that in the room. Away okay, you go. go. Thanks, Fernando. Here we go. Eight minutes. Yeah, so this um, connection dominoes activity is one actually that I used to use in person a lot. And I, during that one of our network meetups, we had a, um, a session where we call it an activity club. And it means people bring activities that maybe they haven't tried before online or they've just designed it and they want to see how it works. And, and it's a safe place to just give it a crack and see what works out. So one day I brought this connection dominoes to our activity club and said, I've only ever done this in person. Um, let's see how how this works online. And mm -hmm. what was really interesting is that the people in the room had, we'd been part of the network for a long time and they all knew each other well, but the nature of the questions that were asked to create the dominoes meant that they started to talk about things they didn't know about each other and they made more connections. So I think the key to this activity is choosing the right questions for the group that you're involved in and what it is that you're trying to achieve. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because you have to find the link, right? So everybody needs to pay attention to what is happening. Yeah. And, and that's the... Of every story. Yeah. So instead of... Um, instead of just listening and waiting for your turn, you are mm -hmm. actively listening out for the connection. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's interesting, and we'll debrief this when people come back in, is what happens if someone tells a story and everyone's like, oh, there's no connection. So what do you do in that space? How do you encourage the story to keep going? Mm -hmm. And is that something that you shape up for participants ahead of time? Or is that part of the learning that happens in the space? And again, that you need to decide, depending on the session you're running and why, as to how you frame that up to begin with. Mm -hmm. Very clever. Yeah. Another connection thing that I do around listening for connections is with a ball of string. Now, this is no good for online, obviously, but in person, uh, we start with a ball of string. Uh, I share the stories to whatever prompts have been given. And anyone who finds a connection waves their arm. I hold the string and toss the ball of string to them. They tell their story and you just continue. And then you end up with this web of connections. Um, do you lay someone on the on the net after? <laughs> That's a nice way to close this network. Usually yeah. we have a large ball of string. So when everybody's connected, we just ask people, okay, now we need to make this net uh, able to hold someone's weight. Nice. So we use the rest of the string now more intentionally weaving the, the net. And then we invite one person to be the volunteer. So this person release the string for someone else so they change position this person gets free they lower the net on the ground the person lays down in the middle and then they raise the the, the net with the wow. person so usually it's and just kind of a surprise because the strings are not like strong but when they are weaved together they they become stronger yeah and, and do you do connection. that with with thin string or really robust string thin one <laughs> wow yeah it wow holds. that's so that's fantastic how I usually uh, wrap that up is I talk about how um, every action that we do have, we do in the room, so I often do it at the beginning, um, will impact other people. So, and I'll say, so for example, if I really pull hard on the string, it's not just going to impact the person that's holding directly connected to me, but it's going to impact everyone else. Or if I decide to just drop the string and not engage, it's not going to just affect the person. And so we play around with that a little bit. But I do love the idea of, making it nice and tight um, mm -hmm. and how do we make those connections tighter to hold the weight that's great yeah and usually it's a surprise for the group because everybody's mm -hmm. oh this will fail you 
like the string will be busted, but it holds. At least for a couple of people, it holds. Wow. And the safety, it's uh, you put it on the ground, the person lays down, spreading the, the weight. People lift it carefully. Don't throw the person up. Yeah. And then lift it back to the ground, leap, uh, put it back on the ground. And you can do it a couple of times. It's, it's nice. It's enough. Wow, that's fantastic. Another yeah. activity that's I another use. That's another meaning for the, the net itself. It's yeah, a completely totally. different meaning. So there is a transition from stories to this uh, this holding feature that we have as a community, right? And we hold everybody in this net all together. And that's the um, the power of interactive activities, right? It's all in how you debrief them in terms of what is the point or the principle that we're trying to illustrate here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I do another connection activity with a deck of cards. So everyone gets given a, a card as they arrive in the room and then they find themselves a partner and they have to find as many connections between the two cards as they can. So it might be uh, we've got the same suit or it's an even number or um, it's the same colored card or whatever. And some are obviously easier to find than others. If you're lucky enough to have ones that are in the same suit and all of those sorts of things. Um, but the ones that are really tricky, like they'll people come back and go, oh, she had ace of diamonds and I had three of clubs, like there's nothing in common with that. And then we start to talk about how, but the card is the same size and it's the same weight. And if you turn the card <laughs> over, the back of the card has got the same. And we start and talking about how sometimes connections with others are really obvious. And sometimes we have to look a little bit harder, but we're all connected in some way. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that's always a fun one to do as well. Nice. Okay, people be hearing. Someone kidnapped her or something. Yeah, all that was, a, all, all that was a fact that you went away. She said, no, I don't like this group anymore. <laughs> Someone dropped. Oh, it's all right. Yeah. Here we Welcome are. back, everyone. Um, I would love for you just to hold your dominoes to the screen so I can see some of this, um, this amazing artwork. Oh, bike riding and reading and all sorts of fantastic things going on there. Thank you for sharing. I'm curious to know, either come off mute or jot in the chat, what did you notice happened during that activity? What did you notice happened? Well, we all spoke about the tradition with a certain level of joy. It was like we, we, we felt so joyful just sharing where we were and what we did as a family. Uh, so that's what I felt. So there was this instant, it didn't matter what the tradition was, there was this instant connection around joy, positive feeling. And Nora's written in the chat, smiles and nodding, how much we have in common. Nice. What else did you notice about what was happening? It was just a really good way to open up like organic conversation. Like we didn't stay with the with the cards the whole time, but we had a really good chat at the end just about lots of other things as well. Yeah, so it's just a conversation starter, right? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes we get really hung up on when we're doing connection activities that they do not follow the rules and it's supposed to go like this. But it's about what is the purpose of the activity? The purpose of the activity is for people to start connecting and getting to know each other. And if that activity points them off in a different direction, then that's all good. Yeah. What did you notice about how I facilitated that conversation? What did you notice about how I set it up? You tried to put um, different people together and we started relating with you first to get the example and then got the aha moment, like, yeah, I have a tradition and then um, and a pretty bad habit. Yeah. Yeah. So that modeling, so that sample of it first, right? So, and I also gave you this idea of how long did I, did I need you to talk for? Uh, otherwise, you end up with people who are taking the whole eight minutes for themselves and nobody else has time to share. What do you 
think the purpose of asking you to draw that uh, conversation rather than just have that conversation was. What was the thinking behind that, do you think? Um, showing off our sweet drawing skills. <laughs> but also... <laughs> but also potentially um, just a way to be super mindful and like connect with your picture and, and be able to show that really easily with, with people that you're going to be with. Yeah. So there's a couple of things there, right? So uh, one thing that we get in an in-person setting that we don't get online is a chance to ponder our responses or ponder what we're going to talk about before we go into a breakout session. So in person, we say, okay, um, I would invite you to get into groups of three or four, and we're going to talk about this. And there's this kind of few minutes of people picking up their notepads and moving to another seat and grabbing a glass of water and getting settled. And people are having a chance to ponder. But on an online in an online setting, you magically end up in this breakout room and you're expected to start talking and you haven't had a chance to think about anything yet. So by inviting people to draw the conversation, you're actually creating a chance for people to ponder what they might talk about, and therefore it is easier for them to engage once they get into the room. The other reason, as Jessica said, is to show off your amazing drawing skills, right? Like, <laughs> But actually it's about getting you doing something physically active rather than just sitting in the screen and using your mouse. It's about how can I, I talk about full body participation. How can I involve all of the, your body in order to be participating and engaging online? So I'm curious then, one last question about this activity. How might you use it in your own context or how might you adapt it to use in your own context? Any ideas off mute or in the chat? I would say just uh, shape it to the theme of the meeting versus, um, you know, I, I like the topics, but um, if it's not relevant and to get people pointed toward the overall goal of the meeting. Yeah, I love that. So changing the prompts around so it makes sense for the group that you're with. Mary, you're waving your hand there. Well, I think I was just being in agreement. Yeah. So choosing your prompts is really important, right? So in the break, I was talking to uh, Fernando about the, the importance of choosing the prompts. And, and it's about what are you wanting to achieve from the activity? And so if it's about get, people getting to know each other uh, better on a personal level, then obviously that's where the prompts are going. Uh, if it's something to connect to the purpose of the meeting, that's where the prompts are going. What I like to keep in mind when I'm thinking about prompts is a past, present, future. So if it's about personal connection, thinking about something that is past, present, or future. And you'll notice with the family tradition, it could either be past or present. And with the habit starting or stopping, it could either be uh, past, present, or future. So it allows for that movement in time and gives people a chance to choose how vulnerable they want to be in their sharing. Different parts of a person's life journey feels, uh, feels more or less vulnerable for them. Any other questions or comments around that first quick activity? Carrie, I just wanna jump in for a moment because I, I think that piece that you said around depth and vulnerability is, it, that is brilliant because not everybody's going to be comfortable in minute, you know, five or seven of a meeting to jump in, maybe never, but you allow that space by, by not, you know, kind of forcing people to go somewhere uncomfortable quickly. So I just thought it's, uh, it, it was so smoothly done, but I, I just wanted to underline the importance of that intentionality on your part. Thank you, Nora. And I think that that comes with practice, right? Uh, I remember years ago, I used this activity in an in-person uh, session, and I used the family tradition, and I said, uh, draw a picture uh, to represent a family tradition you had growing up. And uh, 
now as a more experienced facilitator, I'm like, oh, that's not such a great question because not everyone had great family traditions growing up. I was in a pr privileged position where I did, but I was putting them into a past piece where not everyone wants to go to that past. So framing your questions so that they can choose to be past, present or future allows them to sit in the vulnerability well. Yeah, thanks for highlighting that, Nora. Any quick last questions or comments around that around that exercise? Wonderful. Now, if I was in an in-person setting, I would say to you, uh, thank your partner and make your way back to your seat. But because we're online, you don't get to do that. Or do you? What I would like for you to do now is if you're not already in gallery mode, I'd love for you to go up to view at the top of your screen and click gallery mode so you can see everyone who is in the room with you. And then once you've done that, I would love for you to hover over a person on the screen who you're like, you know what, I'd quite like to sit next to them. Hover over them, click on their face, hold down your left hand click, and drag them to come and sit over next to you. And of course, you've got someone to sit to your left, your right, top and bottom. So you can actually create the screen to be surrounded by whoever you want to be surrounded with. And once you've chosen your newfound friends, you can just jot in the chat a big hello to and tag whoever it is that you are uh, sitting next to, bottom, top, left, or right, where you go. Woo We're moving around. I love it. Now, obviously, in this moment, we didn't need to do this activity of moving it around, but I wanted to share it with you as an option. Hands up if you knew, if you didn't know you could do that. What, hands up if that was a new option for you. Yeah. So uh, I find that this moving around the screen is a really cool option. If you are going to go into discussions where you need them to move quickly, and it might be something that in an in-person setting, you would go around the room, like around Robin, and people need to know when their turn is coming up. Because all of our screens are different, that's hard to do in, in, on, bleh, bleh, on online. So what I invite people to do is we collectively create our, our screens, and I will usually say in alphabetical order or uh, something that we can work together. We then check that we're all have got the same screen in front of us, and then we can do a round robin. Pretty clever, eh? As, as much as anything, it's also just a chance to give people a brain break and have a move around and have a, have a play with the tools. All right. Well, congratulations. That is your first connection activity done. What I find interesting in online uh, sessions is that we we often skip over this connection part pretty quickly. So in in person sessions, we recognise the importance, we get quite dedicated to it, we create all of this conversation. But for some reason, when it comes to online, we feel like we have this quick check in, and then we jump straight to the the body of the work. Um, and so I'm on a mission to change that a little bit and encourage people to, to still allow that connection time uh, when you are online. And one of the easiest ways to do that online is just by asking really good questions. So in a minute, I would love for you to jot in the chat, uh, what is your favorite icebreaker prompt or connection prompt to get people answering online. Now, I'd love for you to type it in the chat, but don't press send. I'll let you know when to press send so that we can read them together. So what is your favorite icebreaker or connection prompt to use online?
If you've managed to type a question into the chat, just look to the screen, give me a thumbs up. A couple more people still, still typing. All right, when you're ready, you can hit send. Yes. The great thing about doing uh, your chats all together is not only do you get to talk all at once, you get to listen all at once. So now I'm going to give you about 60 seconds, 90 seconds to read through all these prompts. Heart, thumbs up, star the ones you love. And I'm sure, Fernando, you will share these in the notes that come out. Wow, there's some great questions in there. Uh, a couple of my favorite online um, prompts are, if you had a billboard that you could use for free for seven days, what would you put on it? It's a great yeah. way that, uh, it's a great way to uncover things that are really important uh, for teams that they might not otherwise share. Sometimes you get political statements. Um, sometimes you, the people's values around fun come out because they just want to use it to make people laugh. But it means that people can share whatever they like and that you get to know what's important. Another one of my favorite ones is uh, grab your car keys and share the story, a story from your keys. And in that uh, moment, I've had stories where people have shared, um, these are my car keys, these represent to me freedom. I've been in a uh, abusive relationship for the last 15 years. This was that my car was the first thing I brought with my own money uh, when I left the relationship. I've had people share that uh, this key is to my um, auntie's flat. She has early dementia. And I'm really scared that one day when I let myself in um, to go and support her, she's not going to know who I am. So you get really deep stories from people's car keys. You also get fun stories like the time someone shared that this looks like a gym card, but actually it's a really expensive key ring because it's never actually opened the gym. But again, it gives people a chance to choose the vulnerability, the level of vulnerability that they share. So I'm going to send to Fernando after this uh, event, I'm going to send to uh, him my top 12 uh, prompts and questions that get people thinking. And you're welcome to use those, adapt those, uh, and, and use them in your own sessions how you wish. All right. So that's about connecting. The uh, purpose of this session, though, was about connecting, contributing, and engaging online. And so I could talk a whole session through around making connections, but how do we move from making connections to actually contributing and engaging in an online space around the topic? And there is um, a few things I think that we need to keep in mind. The first is we need to create a comfortable space for that to happen. And I mean comfortable in terms of physical environment. So we need to give people a heads up that, you know, we're going to be, this is going to be a full participation uh, event. You might be asked to do some weird things. So don't be doing it in the middle of the boardroom where your colleagues are going to be watching. You know, you need to make people physically uh, safe in their own space, but also safe within the online environment, just as we do in person. And I don't think this is too tricky. I think this is just about um, making people feel welcome. It's about letting people know the protocols for this event. So it's I've said to you, just jump on in. 
Um, people don't, if you don't let people know how it's running, they're never quite sure what's expected. The second thing I think is really important about uh, inviting people or encouraging people to contribute and engage is something I touched on earlier, which is about giving people space to ponder and think. This happens more naturally in an in-person space. So we need to be really intentional about how we do it online. So that's draw something to represent. That's uh, go and find something to represent. That's uh, before I put you into breakout rooms, I'm just going to give you 90 seconds on your own to think about it. But it's about being really intentional about creating that pondering space. And then the last thing that I think is important about creating engagement online is thinking of ways that we can encourage full body participation. So I've talked about this already and I've, you've seen me use it today already. Raise your hand. Um, uh, we might say things like the five finger thermometer. I saw Nora was talking about that on a video just recently. So asking for five finger thermometer. You might ask people to use their arm as a gauge, but actually things that gets people moving their body. And so in a minute, I'm going to invite you to do some thinking about that on your own in groups. But before we do that, I want to do an activity with you just to get your brain thinking a little bit differently. So grab yourself a post-it note or a piece of paper or something you can just jot down on. And in a minute, I'm going to ask you three questions. I don't care how you answer them as long as you answer them wrong. All right? Everyone clear? I'm going to ask you three questions. Don't care how you answer them as long as you answer them wrong. All right. W-R-O-N-G? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So... Uh, don't type it in the chat, don't say it out loud, just hold the answer in your head or jot it down on your piece of paper, okay? So the first question is, what is the capital of your country? Whatever country you're from, what is the capital of your country? Second question, how many people in this virtual room? And third question, what is my favorite color? As in what is Kerry Price's favorite color? All right, have we all got three answers written down? Perfect. Okay, so in the chat, I would love for you just to jot in the answer to question one. What is the capital of your country? Las Vegas, San Diego, Sydney, Toronto, Rio de... Oh. Look at that. Tauranga, we would love to be the capital of New Zealand, Jessica. Thanks for popping that in. All right. Okay, second question. How many people in this virtual room? Where you go? <laughs> nice. One, two, 465. Great work. Okay, last question. What is my favorite color? As in, what is Kerry Price's favorite color? This is always interesting. Black, blue. Oh, good colors. Nice. Well, congratulations. You have beautifully illustrated how the human brain works. Yeah. When I said to you, what is the capital of your country? you instantly went to a place in your brain that said, well, it must be a place, and you got creative around that. When I said to you how many people are in this room, you instantly went to a place in your brain that said, well, it must be a number, and you got creative around that. When I said to you, what is my favorite color, 
The only way you could answer that wrong and be 100% sure that you'd got it wrong, given that you don't know what my favorite color is, is to answer it with something other than a color. Table, giraffe, bus, chair. But our brains are so pre-programmed to go where we think we're going to find the answer that it's actually really difficult to get creative. So if I was to throw you into a breakout room now and say, um, how might we encourage full body participation in an online session? You'll say things like, uh, we could use the five finger thermometer and we could use the thumbs up. And those are great ideas, but they're not particularly creative. They're just, you've gone to that place in your brain where you're already going to find the answer. Does that make sense? And so it's important that if you want people to get really creative in your brainstorming or idea generation in an online session and in an in-person session, you actually frame up that, that environment so that people can think creatively and that they're not just bringing to the table whatever is already sitting in their head. So I want to share with you another activity, and this time I need your help to create some resources in that. So if everyone's got post-it notes in front of them or little pieces of paper, um, just super quickly, I would love everyone to draw me a dog, all right? Doesn't have to be exhibition worthy, just needs to be a dog. And now if we've all got a dog, I would love for you on a separate piece of paper to draw me a cat. I love the smile on Rita's face as she's drawing these. So give me a thumbs up if you've got a dog drawn. We've got a dog. Yep. Thumbs up if you've got a cat. Cat. Okay, so the last thing I need you to draw, we've got a dog, we've got a cat. Now if you could just grab a third piece of paper and draw me a mouse. So you'll have a dog, a cat, and a mouse. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. All right, have we got three pictures, everyone? Yep, all right. Now, if you can just hold up your dog picture to the screen, let's have a look at these amazing dogs. Oh, bring them in close. Oh. Got a virtual background, it's a bit tricky. Yeah. Oh, nice looking dogs. <laughs> Ooh, look at the creativity. Okay, awesome. Uh, let me see your cats, please. Can I see your cats? Nice. Well, we have some artists in the room. I love it. Great looking cats. And lastly, can I see your ma your mouse? Nice. Clarissa, you're a star. Look at, oh my word. Great looking mice. Well, congratulations. You have once again beautifully illustrated how the human brain works. I asked you to draw a dog, you had ears and a tail. I asked you to draw a cat, you had ears and whiskers and a tail. And when I asked you to draw a mouse, not a single person thought to draw a mouse like this, like a commuter. Com oh, DJ, what DJ, DJ, DJ. Fernando. <laughs> Woohoo. And, oh, and Fernando, well done. And so what happens there Congratulations. What happens there is we get on this train or this chain of thought, right? And if I had said to you, uh, draw a laptop screen, draw a keyboard and draw a mouse, then there's more chance that you would have drawn a mouse like this than one with ears and a tail. And so that's what happens when we put people into breakout rooms too. As somebody comes up with the first idea, and every idea kind of follows that chain of thought because we haven't had time 
to process our thinking for ourselves. And so it's really important if you want people to engage and contribute in creative ways and bring their own thinking to the table, is just like you would in an in-person session, give people a chance online to think by themselves first before going into a breakout room. And so that's what I'm going to invite you to do now. Uh, I'm going to give you about 90 seconds to grab a piece of paper and just jot down uh, thoughts to uh, thoughts to this question. How might you whoops, how might we encourage full body participation in an online session? So just on your own, jotting down those thoughts, how might we encourage full body participation in an online session? Okay, so in a minute, Fernando is going to throw you back into breakout rooms. Uh, so we, if we can have groups of four, three or four, Fernando, for six minutes. And I'd just like you to share with your breakout room buddies, what did you come up with? How might we encourage full body participation in an online session? Carrie, uh, Carrie. Yes, John. Uh, this time we're not starting with hair, right? <laughs> this time the person with the longest hair can go first. <laughs> I love it. All right. Thanks, Fernando. If you can pop people into breakout rooms. Six minutes. Here we go. Here they are. Here we are. Welcome back, team. That was a quick little chat in that breakout room, but I'm curious to know what came up for you, either off mute or in the chat. What are some of the ways you came up with to encourage full body participation? You know, can I ask a question? Uh, I'm not sure if that was Brazilian six minutes or American six minutes or New Zealand six minutes, but that was fast, Fernando. Man, that was fast. I'm not sure. Uh, I'd say it's, it was a New Zealand six minutes because we're already in the future. You guys were just catching up. <laughs> oh, nice. So what, what, if anything, what did you come up with in those six minutes? How might you encourage uh, full body participation? So Kerry, I we we talked about a number of them, and what I took from Carolina, which I really loved, uh, is the the playing ball. Um, you know, where you one participant throws a ball to the other, and then the other one will try to catch it, but it should really be like an exaggerated move, not like this, but you should really go for it, you know. So that was quite good for me. I love that. So that's a great mm. way to do a round robin, right? So instead of going around, you can say, so uh, mm. Rita, who are you going to pass the ball to? Oh, I'm going to pass the ball to. And so it's a nice way of tagging people in. Love that. What else? I started actually talking, talking about ways that we can encourage participation like not not the actual games or icebreakers so um i commented that it should be like a safe space and start with silly questions or lead by example so then you start first you do the activity like you're doing right now carrie 
Um, and then we all get more comfortable to actually do anything else. Yeah, so the same the same principles that apply in in-person, right? The modeling, the safety, the scaffolding into activities. Thanks, Nina. Uh, Carolina, exercise. Uh, exercises that ask people to find something and bring it to the meeting, like an object that represents yourself. Yeah, so inviting people to get up from your desk, go and find an object. Love that. What else? Well, she's, she's not speaking up. I'm going to throw out what Nora <laughs> brought up in our group because we really liked it. Um, I think I want to find a way to somehow tie it into the material, but she was suggesting have people write their name with their non-dominant hand. Um, I, I don't know what you would do with it, but I think if you find a way to tie it into the material, it would be fun just to get them doing something silly and see if it yeah. do well, right? I love that. So that I actually use an activity like that to talk about the importance of using your strengths in a team. So I will invite people to write out their full name or sign their name. And I don't say with your dominant hand, I just say, can you just write your name or sign your name? And then I ask them to uh, write it again using their non-dominant hand. And then we do a bit of a debrief around what did you notice? And we talk about how when you're working to your strengths, it comes easily, it's quick, um, it's more legible. Uh, when you're trying to improve your weaknesses, and focusing on that, it doesn't matter how hard you practice, it's never going to be as, as great and it's going to take a lot of energy. So I'm not sure what content you're involved in, DJ, but that's one way that I use that um, that activity. Uh, uh, for me, there's something both Frances and Mary alluded to. Although it's not an activity in and of itself, but the way they introduce themselves to their, to their audience, whether it's um, virtual or otherwise, is to recognize those who may be vis visually impaired. Mm -hmm. So, so Frances, for example, would say I'm, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. tall and blonde and she would give a description of what she looks like. So if you're visually impaired, but you're part of the, of, of the audience, you'd get a better feel. So creating that safe space where you feel comfortable. I really, really, really love that. Thank you, Frances. I love mm -hmm. that, Frances. That's, yeah, that is spot on, perfect. Something that Mary just did then is a really simple way um, to encourage full body participation. So sometimes when I'm doing uh, workshops, I will say, okay, for the next 10 minutes, we're not allowed to use digital emojis. You need to react using your hands. And so we have mind blowing and thumbs up. And it, so it's just encouraging that movement. And what often happens is once you ban the digital emojis, these physical emojis remain for the for the rest of the workshop. Any other ideas that came up um, before I share with you just a couple of mine that haven't been mentioned? All right, so uh, one of the ones that I like to do uh, midway through if I wanna checking in on people's energy levels, you know, often we'll say what your five finger energy level or a gauge, I will invite people to show me a dance move that represents how you're feeling right now. And so some people are like really out there, some it's just a little kind of nodding of the head, but show me a dance move um, to represent how you're feeling right now. Uh, and another simple way for full body is every time I put people into breakout rooms, I invite them if possible to unplug their, um, unplug their laptop and take their laptop to a different room. So just as you would in person, get up and move into a breakout room, encouraging people to do that online is just as easy. What I would love to do now though, is thumb dance moves are great. Oh, Fernando, thumb dance moves are great. I love that, what a fantastic, fantastic idea. Mary has asked for our dance moves. So actually everyone show your dance move. Uh, that would make a great screenshot. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. Well, I want to introduce uh, just two last activities before we wind up today. And one is, uh, is not an activity that requires you to run, but it provides the same level of adrenaline as if you were actually out there doing it in person. And this is called Breakout Room Tiggy. Who has played Breakout Room Tiggy or Breakout Room Tag before? You are in for a treat. 
So okay. in a minute, Fernando is going to open up three breakout rooms. And when I say go, you will have the option to move into whatever breakout room you like. I am going to be it. I am the tagger, all right? And you will know I'm the tagger because I will come into your room with my hands on my on my head or my hand on my head. The idea is as soon as I enter your room, I need to call your name before you leave. Now, if I can manage to call your name before you leave, you are now it. And you have to put your hand on the, your head and go chasing into other rooms to tag someone else. All right? Everyone clear on what is happening? So to join the rooms, you should just be able to push join and you will join instantly. To leave the room, make sure you, you're clicking leave room, not leave session. Otherwise, you will disappear altogether. You will be brought back into the main room and then you can jump into another room from there. So I'm going to give you a 10 second head start, Linda. Uh, I didn't. I didn't get it. If you if you leave in time, then you're it, or you're not it. No. So if you leave in time, you're not it. If Got I it. manage to call your name before you leave, you are now it. Got All it. right. Okay. So I'm going to give you a ten seconds head start. Find yourself into a room. How do we get there? Join breakout room. You okay. Just join. Be able to join a room. Join and yes. To make things easier, uh, we use one, two, three as well. So I'll join carry the one, two, three. All right. <laughs> so I am going to be it. And I will start by going in. John, yeah. Did you manage to find the breakouts? I'm not seeing anything where I can join the room, Fernando. I'm, I'm it. I'm, <laughs> oh. So, Rita, here is now. Okay. Um, Rita is it. Can you join a room? I need to go to a room, yes. Yeah, go to room one, full of people. And then, Fernando, if you want to just wind it up in, in sort of 30 seconds or so. Yeah. Do you want me to close in, uh, in 30 seconds? Yeah, that'll be great. I wasn't sure whether I got you, Petra. You got me. <laughs> I was not fast enough. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how your adrenaline lifts, even though you're not actually running. Yes, that was what everybody was saying. It's just like <laughs> how that totally worked. <laughs> yeah. I just sent a warning for people to close in a few seconds. Wonderful. Thank you. And then people can run as there is no tomorrow. So are you in a Californian summer, Petra? Yeah, so it's cold. <laughs> I'm in Northern California. Northern California is not so warm. Not so warm? Right. Welcome back. Clarissa, did you manage to escape getting tagged? I did. I did. <laughs> we were quick Didn't right now. Running? <laughs> it did. It really did. It's very <laughs> fun. That was fun. I enjoyed that. Uh, I love it. What's As a Canadian, it's hard to win that game and be polite enough. So you're not talking because <laughs> you're like panicked. <laughs> Oh, I love that. That was super good. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, did that get the blood pumping a little bit? Yeah? Nina's no. like, I feel like Nina's like, what the heck? Just stop it. Yeah. There's forever. She's the tagger. You're stuck. Oh, you were the tagger. <laughs> nice. Oh, not easy to do on a phone. Yeah. Uh, yes. yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And, so, and was, was, really speaking, was 
Sorry, it was tricky for me because you need to click on leave breakout room and actually confirm. And then I was like, damn it, I need to confirm. And then I got caught. Uh, <laughs> I got caught, yeah. So I will let you in on a little secret is that I wasn't always 100% sure whether I'd caught someone or whether they would left before they heard their name. So I just kept tagging people. We may have had a couple of taggers going nice. <laughs> as well. Nice. So um, I shared that activity with you for a couple of reasons. One, it's just a good little energizer if you're happen happening to be online for a long time um, and you can get people's um, adrenaline pumping a little bit without them actually physically moving. But also it's a good way to introduce people to the technology. So if they've never, um, never tried joining rooms by themselves before, this is a low risk thing to do, right? They can get the hang of it while everyone's playing Tiggy. Um, and then when you go into an open space session or something where people are getting to choose the topics where they're chatting about, they're now familiar with how that works and they're not uh, spending time figuring that out when an important discussion is taking place. Interesting to use in your own context? Awesome. All right, team, well, we are nearly to the end of this session and I would like to wrap up using one of my most favorite online uh, wrap-ups. And this is called an intention anthem. Now there's a little bit of instruction to this, so I'm just going to give it to you in three pieces um, so that we can all keep up with the instructions. So the first instruction is this. Uh, I'd love for you to grab yourself a piece of paper and just jot down your responses to these or, or finish these three sentences. I am, I believe, and I will. You can make them relevant to what you have learned in today's session if you like, but equally you can take it as wide as you like. So just about- And what was the last one, please? Uh, I will. So about 60 seconds to jot those down. I am, I believe, and I will. Okay, second instruction, if you are not already, I would love for you to head on up to view and put yourself in gallery mode so that you, sorry, put yourself in speaker mode, speaker view, so you will only see whoever is speaking. You will only see whoever is speaking. Now, in a minute, we're, I'm going to start this activity by saying, let the intention anthem begin. And that is an invitation for one person to just jump into the space and read out their three intentions. I am, I believe, I will. And as soon as somebody, uh, that person has finished their, in, their intention, someone else is just gonna jump right on in there and say theirs. Now, it doesn't matter if two or three people jump in together, Zoom will figure that out. But the key is not to leave the gap between the intentions uh, too long. Otherwise, you end up with someone on the big screen wondering what they're doing, staring into space. So we need to be kind to each other and jump quickly in once that uh, first person has finished speaking. Uh, and they will, you will say your intention, I am, I believe, I will. Once the popcorning starts slowing down and there's a little bit of a gap, I'll assume that no one else wants to play and I will jump in and finish with my intention. Sound okay? All right. 
So let the intention anthem begin. I am a professional facilitator. I believe in the power of connection and I will share ideas to make meetings better with meaningful connections. I am a wine oh, yeah. snob. Oh, <laughs> I am a wine snob. I believe in human potential to learn and grow and I will see what I can do to get reluctant clients to turn their cameras on. <laughs> I am happy. I believe in virtual connection and I will keep using full body participation even more. I, I am sometimes impatient. Hmm? I am gonna jump in and say, I am amazing. I believe that I can, and I will continue to learn and grow. I'm a good baker. I believe in online recipes and I will try to do a fence cake stand this weekend. <laughs> I am sometimes impatient working online. I believe I can be mindful enough not to be impatient while uh, meeting. I will keep this note in front of me this week. I'm happy that I joined. I believe that I belong and I do have some meaning to, to bring. And then I will use some of these uh, greats for the next sessions. Very happy to be here. I am committed to facilitation. I believe I can. I will keep on trying. I'm a I'm... great presenter. I believe I need to make my sessions more engaging and I will make my presentations more engaging. I'm an optimist. I believe in the good of human beings. I will continue to help others learn and grow. I am energized by the session. I believe that Carrie's favorite color is pink. <laughs> and I believe and I will get better at virtual facilitation. Hmm. I am tired and inspired at the same time. I believe I'm tired because it's after midnight here. And uh, I will share uh, more and think about it more tomorrow, especially about the full body participation. I am happy I came. I believe I've made some great connections. I will enjoy sharing the connection domino and the wrong answers. I, I am. am. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, Clarissa. Oh, I am also an optimist. Um, I believe in the power of human connection, and I will use these new skills in facilitation. I am online. I believe there is more to be discovered, and I will be exploring online. I am excited by how the world of facilitation is getting smaller through the power of technology. Uh, I believe that there are even more amazing facilitators out there for us to each connect to. And I will continue to bring connection to facilitators wherever and whenever I can. Thank you so much uh, for you. having me here today. You missed one thing. I will finally let the team know that my favorite color is pink. <laughs> and you are a hundred percent right. My current, my current favorite color is pink. <laughs> thank you, John. And thank you, team, for hanging out with me today. Thank you, Fernando and Carolina. It's been such a pleasure. Um, if there's anything I raised today that you want more information about. Um, or you want copies of instructions or anything that I've shared, and um, please feel free to email me or hit me up on LinkedIn. Um, honestly, what is mine is yours. Um, feel free to share, steal, adapt, tweet, change, use, however you like in, in your own context. Yeah, thank you so much, Kerry, for all of that and, and for everybody who came because it's like this learning and sharing together, it's so exciting. And Carrie, I just want to say how you model uh, the activities and everything. So it's so inspiring. So thank you so much for coming. And everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>
Pleasure. Agreed. Well done. Excellent work. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. <laughs>